Hi everyone, I'm Sloane from SloaneBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity musician video. Now this one is kind of interesting because there was a tug of war in my bathroom this morning between two different musicians and one I had the full intention of doing um, as I was running this morning, the most beautiful and best kick-ass percussionist on the planet was coming through to me and it's not the first time he's been in my bathroom twice in the past month which sounds really weird but I was talking to another psychic my friend Deanna on the phone and she said oh my god so and so is sitting on my couch wants you to talk about him he's ready to talk about something that happened in the hotel and I'm like I don't even know what you're talking about and the next day there was John Bonham in my shower which sounds really weird this morning, I had both John Bonham and Jim Morrison in my shower. Now, what I have kind of want to explain it a little bit. That sounds really bizarre. Um, haul me off to the nut bin right now. But what it is, is I don't think they see it the same way on the other side. They come and talk to you when your mind is free, when you can pick up on their energy. And of course, when I'm showering and I'm cleaning, well, also my body, but I was actually cleaning my energy. I was doing um, kind of a cleansing ritual this morning in the shower and so they both stood there and I was like but I want to do John Bonham because I love Led Zeppelin and I was never really a fan of the doors this pissed off Jim Morrison to no end but Jim Morrison won out because instantly as I went to focus on John Bonham and I'm going to say this I think John Bonham is more the gentleman and step back Jim Morrison's energy came through and it's really, really strong. And I thought it was actually appropriate because today is Sagittarius month and Jim Morrison was born on December 8th, 1943. Can you believe it? That hottie would literally be 75 years old had he lived, had he not died on July 3rd, 1971. Okay, that beautiful man would be 75. He'd be right up my alley for dating. Let me just tell you that. You know how I love the older men and especially the Sages because they're so much freaking fun. Having said that, when I started to pick up on Jim's energy, of course, I have to run and pull up his chart. Do I know if the information is 100% correct? I actually don't, but it's referenced through a family member. So I tend to take the data a little bit more accurate when it gets an A plus beside it, meaning a family member gave the time of birth. So Jim Morrison was a Sagittarius with a Aquarius rising. Now what is Aquarius rising if it's not shocking, rebellious, ruled by Uranus, fuck you kind of planet? That's what it was. That was his whole personality. With the most stubborn, self-indulgent, self-soothing, as in, if they like chocolate, they'll eat a bunch of chocolate. If they like LSD, they'll do a bunch of LSD. If they love cashmere, they'll wear cashmere from head to toe, Taurus moon, okay? So Jim Morrison had this really eclectic kind of energy to him. Um, some very, very traditional. And he was also, um, oddly enough, he was a Capricorn Mercury, which gave him an astute business mind, okay? So the business mind was off the hook with him. He thought from a business perspective. And keep in mind, that kind of energy gets a lot more graceful and a lot more fluid as it gets older. The Taurus moon is going to do whatever the hell it wants, and it's as stubborn as shit. It's just so stubborn. Taurus moon. No offense to any of y'all Taurus moons out there. Then you've got the Sagittarius sun, and the Sagittarius sun is completely boundaryless okay so sag lives half in the clouds and half on the ground all right and aquarius is just basically alien <laughs> then he i noticed he had uranus mars and saturn all in gemini all right and all retrograde along with a retrograde pluto he had a lot of retrogrades this was a, a do-over lifetime for him do over. Don't you just wish you could go, excuse me, I'm done with this life. Do over. Um, anyway, this was that kind of a life for him. But I immediately, immediately, and I'm going to say this straight off the bat, Jim Morrison. Okay, wait, let me start over again. Jim Morrison has been floating around Los Angeles for years. I'm going back like 25 years. I used to pick up on his energy. He was always saying he was married to this psychic, married to that psychic. There's at least probably 30 psychics in Los Angeles that have spiritual unions with Jim Morrison. Not even kidding. He shows up everywhere, which means when he passed, he didn't go right over. It doesn't mean he was in a bad spot. It means he was hanging out on the astral level or different dimension, dimensional level. 
Now, what I got with Jim right away is I saw the Jim Morrison, the spirit, the soul, being born in this lifetime to his family, but coming from a past lifetime as a Druid priest. No joke. He comes in with this... Um, this complete understanding of how to utilize metaphysical principle. I'm going to use the word witchcraft. I mean it in the sense of using the natural elements in order to harness energy, alchemy, in order to quicken the pace of the tempo on earth. He came in with a basic understanding of that. He was also born into a family which was very trying for him because on some level they were not metaphysical. They were more like the Taurus moon side of himself, which was something that he had in him, but wasn't really the essence of who he was. He also had, by the way, an eighth house Neptune, which is um, besides, and it was in Libra, which is interesting, but besides that, it was... Um, Neptune in the eighth house is for odd, quirky sexual experiences. Uh, it is for unusual religious practices while trying to balance it out. Then he had Venus and Scorpio in the ninth, which is like sexual promiscuousness in the house of Sagittarius in the sexual sign of Scorpio. So it's really an interesting chart. All you astrologer types go out and look it up. It's quite interesting. Now, what I get with Jim Morrison right off the bat is here's this child born into a body in this life. Remember, we come from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime and he carried with him his Druid background. This is what I get. I literally get it. The Celtic side of him. He carried that through into this lifetime and he kind of shows me his fingertips. Like on the tip of his fingers, he could command the energy the way he wanted it to. And this was a huge block for his father. His father wanted him to command the energy the way his father wanted him to. And I didn't look up the father's chart. My guess is it's something, um, it's probably a, a fixed fire sign or a fixed sign at the very least. It seems like it would be that way to me, just from the energy I'm picking up right now. But Jim, when he was in his childhood, was very much Sagittarius, living on the ground and living in the spirit realm, okay? Because remember, Sagittarius is both. But for Jim in particular, there was remnants, there was essence, there was texture from that lifetime where he was a priest in charge of elevating the energy through alchemy of the people around him. So when he was born, he didn't forget that life. He came through with this, this, charismatic ability to be able to change the energy and shape shift from around inside of them. Now, if you've ever seen a person shape shift, and I have many times because you'd be surprised what's walking out there amongst us. I feel like I can say this during Jim Morrison's video because he's literally describing it in every single song he does. He is telling you about the metaphysical principle. He is telling you about the essence of who and what he was and what the world is. It's not as it seems. And actually, really interestingly, when he went into his, um, I'm, I'm picturing, he wants me to see him dance. He loves the way he moves. He thinks he is all that. There's a little bit of, uh, egotism, a little bit of like, look at me. I can't believe I'm this person. I think in the past life, he may not have been as attractive, although he may have been seen as attractive, but in this lifetime, he was damn good looking. That boy was good looking anyway. And he says he knows it. Now he goes around. Okay. How do I explain this? It's not like when you're on the other side, you have to travel by train or, you know, go to an area where, um, you have to move in a, in, in a way like take a car, take a bus, take a that. When you're on the other side, you can just energetically tap into. Now think of the movie Star Trek. I know it sounds really weird, but think of the movie Star Trek and think of how they um, stepped on that thing and then they just would kind of disappear the molecular structure and they'd end up like in Chicago in the 40s. I always use that as an, as an example. But it's, it's kind of like that when you're on the other side. You think it and you're there. Look at the movie Ghost. Go research with the movie Ghost. Forget the, com the comedy of it. Get into the middle of it and you'll see the actual accuracy of what the souls do and what happens when one passes over and when one really can connect with the energy. So it was actually 
really well written, although it was a comedy, um, but, but it was really well written, okay? So anyway, in the middle, okay? Watch the psychic's character develop into a real psychic and watch the Patrick Swayze character learn how to utilize the astral level so that he can get where he needs to go. That's kind of what Jim Morrison's been doing and he's been doing it for many years. Now, when I'm looking at his energy, he's really talking about being a young child, eight, nine, 10, and he's telling me that he can see the other side. There was a story about him um, being coming, driving up on um, an accident and seeing on an Indian reserve and seeing the Indian bodies writhing in um, pain after this accident and then crossing over and he could see it like a psychic. He could actually see into the astral level. Here's the kicker. His family denied that that ever happened. Well, they said there was an accident, but they said that, you know, they didn't recall what he recalled. Basically, you know, discrediting what he was, making him into a crazy person and whatever. What he actually saw was the harnessing of the Indian peoples on the re reservations energy and the murder of these people and them in the astral level all around that energy as if the energy had been harnessed in. Really interesting, he's telling me this and I've never known this. I come from Canada, we have a lot of Indian native reserves in Canada, Vancouver, Ontario, there's a lot of land blocked off for native people that is just native people. Also, when you go to Palm Springs, they keep the land for the um, original people that were on the land. Now, here's what Jim's telling me right now, and I never thought this to be true, but it's an interesting thing, so I'm gonna throw it out there. He loves to talk, he talks all over the place. What he's saying about the natural land, the Indian reserves, the, the way that the land is sectioned and quartered off, that what it is actually is a, um, okay, think in the ocean he's showing me, he's saying think of a fishing boat, think of how they put a net out there, think of how the net keeps the fish in, in, you know, in that area. So the fish swim and they think they're free, but they're actually in the middle of a net. This is what he's saying happened to the soul of these Indians. That because of the Indian reserve or reservation that they were on, the coordinates of the reservation and where it's marked off, keep the energy stuck in that position. So it's kind of like an invisible force field or an invisible net around the energy. That's what he was actually seeing. He was actually seeing the Indian people that had passed away, been murdered is what I'm hearing also, and died actually freaking out because they couldn't get out of that energy block, okay? That's what he's saying actually happened. So I'm seeing that energy around him and it was quite interesting. I'm also seeing that when he saw that, he was able to connect immediately with the other side. So this boy was a psychic medium. You're a birthborn psychic medium. All this nonsense you see about people, oh, you can learn to be psychic, you can learn to be a medium. No, you Now what he's showing me is that when he was born, he was born with his second sight from being like a druid priest. He was born with the ability to see things in a different way, in a different direction. He was born to be able to pick up on psychic energy. This boy, young man, <laughs> hottie, he likes me to call him hottie. He's still flirting, I'm not joking you. He was so used to using his sexual energy to raise the vibration around him and kind of manipulate the energy around him. There's a little bit of an understanding with him what he needed to do on a mass level to make you love him, to make you like him. He kind of fed off of that energy, which I'm sure a lot of entertainers do because they give to you, you give back to them in the way of applause, admiration, um, adulation, whatever it is. So he learned how to do that really young, but he could see over to the other side. So he operated in a psychic sense. He is also showing me that as he was performing in Los Angeles, and I'm driven right over here, I'm trying not to laugh because um, the energy of him is interesting, okay? I'm, I'm going to say this to you. There was kind of a collaborative universal love and he got very fed up with the fact that he had to be pinned down into one way of expression. That's Aquarius rising, of course. But he got very angry that he had to be pinned down into one way of expression, and that's actually why he left the United States. They make up all this bullshit about the, you know, I exposed myself. Um, <laughs> I ignored every single rule and did the exact opposite of what you thought I should do, the way that you wanted me to do it. 
That's true, he did it, but he wasn't gonna go to jail anyway. That's not actually why he left the United States. He actually left the United States so he could ground himself back in, and he went back to the place where he lived before so that he could die there, but he wasn't supposed to die there. He was en route there, okay? So something got sidetracked with him. He was not supposed to die there. Now, it's interesting. I'll get to his death in a second. Anyway, it's interesting because Jim Morrison works his magic from the other side. He literally is a practitioner on the astral level. He is still doing that. He is working alchemy on the other side. This is what he's chosen to do. He hasn't chosen to come back. Doesn't want to come back to this fucking place, okay? Does not want to come back here. Does not like what happened. Did enjoy his life, but does not like what happened. Also said his father, this is, this is, the energy I'm picking up, according to him, now, there's no disrespect to the family here, and I'm sure everybody's kids could say something against their mother, father, whoever, that they don't like if they don't disagree with them. But he's showing me the incarnations between him and his father and the binding on the other side between the two to work out a karmic debt, but it wasn't set into action by either one of them. There's a third party that binds the two together and both of them have the same skills, but in different ways. So the dad knew how to manipulate the energy too, knew how to use magic in a different way. I realized he was an army man, Navy man, actually. I get that, but that's not what I'm being shown here. Well, I, I know he was that here, but what I'm being shown is the utilization of the energy, the ritual behind it, and and the spell casting between both of them in different ways. So they came into this life, they kind of tumbled into this life together, um, meaning it's they kind of went that way together. His issue, this is what I'm hearing to say, I'd have no idea if his mother's still alive, but his issue with his mother was not that he didn't love his mother because he did love his mother. The reason he didn't talk to his mother is because she wouldn't, stand up for what he was against his father. So he did what people do. He scapegoated the wrong person or he put his anger on this person because it was easier for him to be angry at this person than this person, all right? So he is saying he was fucked up emotionally. That is part of his stubborn, I'm not gonna back down. You're gonna pay attention to me. You don't pay attention to me. I'm cutting you off like ice, okay? For a Sagittarius, he's not very fun <laughs> when he says that, okay? But the other side of him is totally fun. And he talks about his music and the way that he wrote it. Every single song he wrote is written from the perspective perspective of the metaphysical. So I want you to understand that. It's written from the perspective of a metaphysician. This was a metaphysician that came on to the planet and learned how to do what he was doing because he was trying to transform the energy. Now, I don't know if that's for good or bad or what that's for, but that's what he was doing. So when you speak of Jim Morrison, you speak of this this eclectic guy that climbed where he was supposed to go and then his soul roots came into focus. This man wanted to go back to his soul roots. That's what the poetry was about. That's what France was about. He wanted to study again. He wanted to go back to the roots of a metaphysician, not just a musician, which I find really interesting because the two sometimes run in tandem. You will find metaphysics and music in the same connection together. So Jim Morrison wanted to like create this world for him. What he does say was his downfall. He lived a psychic life and he lived in two worlds, okay? So there's a part of him that really lived in one world, the traditional world, the world that you and I live in, the world of nine to five, which is bullshit, by the way. You don't have to do nine to five whatever. It's whenever to whenever you can find a job doing it the way you want to do it. Remember that there are no rules. See, guess who's talking now? It's Jim Morrison. <laughs> ah, there's no rules, right? I'm telling you, but this is what he's saying. There's no rules. But what he found was he was bound by universal law and karmic law, and he couldn't unbind himself in this life. That's why he left the United States. He was actually looking to raise his vibration in a different way. But he had this downfall. Now, who cannot love somebody that took as much LSD as him, okay? Minus the group of kids I hung around in my high school. 
and we'd give him a close run for his money, all right? But he took the LSD on top of his psychic ability, and I've said this often, and yes, my kids know this, so I'm not saying anything that's gonna blast them out of the water, but when you're born psychic and you're a medium and you start doing mind-altering drugs, it really throws you dimensionally into other areas and hooks you into different levels on the astral level, things that you don't even think would be there are there. So you're able to see the world in a different way. And it's not quote hallucinogenic. What it is, is fact finding information. Like people don't like to see it that way. And it can really tweak your head. It can really fuck with your mind. He is saying to me that the drugs and the alcohol were wearing on his soul. And he heard something deep in his heart. Like he wanted to be a heart centered person again, which is why he left the United States. He finds the energy around the United States very, um, like there's a thundercloud around it. The energy is harnessed and he's showing me, this is interesting. I don't even know where this is coming from. What he's showing me is he's showing me a group of something. I'm seeing hands, so I'm gonna say they're people, dead people, people on the astral level, I don't know who, but he's letting me look through his mind and he's showing me what he sees. He's showing me hands like this. Now, when I see hands like this, I'm thinking of doing Reiki. This is what I'm thinking about, like I'm doing Reiki, right? So I'm seeing the hands around, but it's around the earth and it's keeping the energy down. The flow is down and they're focused on us. Then I see the hands double and triple over the United States as though the United States has the ability through something in its either its emotional landscape, its actual landscape, or its energetic component as part of the Earth's energy to actually shift the way that the world does things. So there's a lot of power that comes out of the United States. He's showing me that that power is being squashed. This is what he's showing me. He didn't want to be squashed. He said they were squashing him back then. We're talking like, you know, late 60s into the 70s. He did everything he could to try to unbreak that through rebellion, which he is now telling me, and I love rebellion because I'm a first house Uranus, okay? So that's like being an Aquarius rising, but it's, you know, Uranus in the first house. It's like a... Fuck you to tradition, but he is telling me that when you are rebellious, you are actually controlled in the opposition of what is expected. So he's really a wordsmith with what he says, and he's pretty intellectual as far as his understanding of both the mainstream mundane world and the metaphysical spiritual practices. And I'm going back to Druid priest. This is who I see. He shows me himself robed. He takes many wives. <laughs> Why he's telling me this, I don't know. He keeps showing me rings everywhere. He's putting rings, he's binding. It's not binding, it is it is binding his wives. He's keeping his wives with him on the other side. I don't know what that means. I don't know if he's gathering a group or gathering the troops or doing something on the other side. And I know what you're thinking. He's been dead a freaking long time, 1971. Again, July 3rd, 1971. But... Time is different. You can have castles in Europe where they have ghosts that are four and 500 years old. People have come and gone and died and come and gone and died and that freaking ghost is still wandering the halls, right? It goes all the way back. Reason is, is time is not the way we think it is. It is on this planet. But as he's showing me, he's working on the astral levels right now. And he's showing me, and I'm gonna say something really weird, all right? I don't know why I want to say this, but there is a connection between Jim Morrison and boy George, I don't know what that means. I can't even comprehend that. I cannot go there in my mind. He just keeps showing me boy George. So either he wants me to focus on boy George for some reason or say something about boy George or he's focusing me on that energy. I don't feel like it though, quite frankly. I don't wanna go there. I'm asking him what happened when he was in France. What happened? What, what happened to his body? And he's just kind of shaking his head with this. Now, what I'm seeing is, yes, he fucked with his body a lot, all right? Like he's looking at his body and he's like, I don't even know myself. Like I see him, he looks in the mirror and he's like, I don't recognize myself. But he wasn't really sick at the end of his life. What he was, was getting strong in his power, actually. He was getting very strong in his power. He was living with the girlfriend that he loved, but he never really gave his love away fully. He gave it kind of universally and kind of sideways, but not necessarily Oh, um, demonstratively, okay? So not hugely demonstrative. Um, 
I feel like the girlfriend was with him because she was tied to him and they were meant to be together. But I also feel like she dropped the ball. He had asked her to watch what was going on around him. And it feels like he was trying to get back healthy. I see him trying to get back healthy. I see references to breaking on through to the other side. Now, here's what's interesting. I'm not sure the way that he died, the way that it's described is the way that it happened. He apparently had congestive heart failure, but they never did an autopsy. So that's like saying somebody stopped breathing, somebody's heart stopped working. Duh, that's what happens, okay? There's no autopsy, so we don't know, all right? So whatever's written is bullshit, BS, this is what he's saying. No autopsy, no vision of the body. What he is showing me, which is kind of interesting, is he was in a three-day process of doing some sort of prayer and ritual. I'll just put it that way. I don't know what kind it was, but he was in the process of prayer, ritual, and he was actually experimenting with seeing if he could shut his body down so that he could reach those places he reached as a child, probably on LSD. So different levels dimensionally of the astral level. And he was playing with this. And then he shows me fire on his hands. I was playing with fire, all right? Like he's very visual picture like this, all right? Um, and he's going back to the song, you know, come on, light my fire. When he's talking about that, he's talking about actually light my power, be my power, elevate my power is what he's saying. That's what he's saying. It's not just like light my fire, have sex, I dig you, you're hot. That's what he wanted you to think. But he's saying elevate. It's He's commanding. He's commanding the ritual. This is what he's doing. Literally, I'm going back to Druid priest. I can't stop saying this. This is what he's saying. Oh. Okay, I've got to let him take a break for a minute because I have to get a phone call. This is my problem with the videos. I love doing the videos, but I love reading the clients. So Jim Morrison over there, and he's right there. It's like he's right there, all right? So maybe I will come back to him today, if not at a later date. And once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.